Our Japanese wedding ceremony was held at Hikawa Shrine in Akasaka last December. It was a cold, drizzly day, which may not be ideal for a wedding, but Japanese shrines look amazing with a little bit of rain. Plus, it cleared up just in time for the ceremony, so everything was perfect. Although located near busy stations like Roppongi and Akasaka, Hikawa Shrine is tucked away deep in its spacious garden and is very peaceful and private. The shrine is also dedicated to the Shinto god Susano and his wife Kushinada Hime, and is therefore associated with good relationships and happy marriages. The 400-year-old ginkgo tree that greets you at the entrance was all lit up with its bright yellow foliage for our big day. Now let's go inside and get ready. Building, we're going to be getting ready upstairs. Hi, Hagi. This is my friend Hagi. Hi. And she's going to be helping with my makeup and everything today. After my friend Hagi did my makeup, it was time to put on that wig. Unlike most wigs that are usually floppy and soft, this one was rock solid. It literally felt like wearing a helmet. But believe it or not, it's actually not that uncomfortable. And thank goodness for that, because the wedding kimono is. We'll let my husband change first. The groom wears what's called a monsuki haori hakama. Mon means emblem and refers to the family crest which is printed on the haori, or kimono jacket. You'll find one emblem on the back right below the neck, two on the sleeves, and two on the chest. Hakama refers to the pants. The unique thing about kimonos is that it wears you. In other words, there's no squeezing into anything, just lots of folding and tying. Lots of folding and tying. The white pom-pom looking thing in the front is the haori himo, which loosely ties the front of the jacket together. I wore a white wedding kimono called the shiromuku and wow, you wouldn't believe how much there is to it. First, there's the padding to create the basic shape. Then there's the wrapping. After you've got the basic shape, you put on the first layer called the nagajuban and tie it into place. Next, we have the second layer called the kakeshita. That's a lot of cords. And you definitely feel it. The obi, or large kimono belt, is wrapped around the second layer. And how they tie this thing, I have no idea, but it looks pretty amazing. <laughs> the last layer is the uchikake, which is like a thick coat for kimonos. And it is thick. Uchikake have beautiful silk embroideries of plants, animals, and treasures that are thought to be good luck, such as cranes, orchids, and carriages. After applying some color to my lips, we were ready for the final step, putting on the wataboshi, which literally means cotton hat. An interesting fact, before becoming a headdress for weddings, the wataboshi was actually just a winter hat to keep warm. With a custom to cover the bride's face for only the groom to see until after the ceremony, the wataboshi with its large shape became a part of the wedding kimono. <laughs> This kimono is not the most comfortable thing. Um, it's very, very heavy, and my shoulder is starting to ache a little bit, but it's definitely worth it. wedding kimono is generally assumed to symbolize purity and willingness of the bride to be quote-unquote dyed in the groom's colors. But another theory suggests differently. I wasn't able to incorporate all the little details in this video, so if you want more depth, be sure to check out my new blog. 
We just got done rehearsing our parts for the wedding and we are about to go outside and walk through the entrance and do the real thing. Um, there's lots of little things we have to remember, so I'm a little bit nervous if I can do it correctly. My dad and my grandma are here. Uh, my mom couldn't make it, she's in the States, but uh, I'll be sending her pictures and she'll see this video, so it'll be all good. The Japanese wedding ceremony is called the Shinzen Kekkonshiki and literally means wedding before God. The ceremony begins with the performance of ancient court music for the San Shin no Gi, where the bride and groom are escorted to the pavilion by the shrine masters and maidens. Inside the pavilion, the Shinto priest announces our marriage to the Shinto gods and begins the Sankon no Gi, a ritual to strengthen the couple's bond where the bride and groom take turns sipping sake from three sake cups increasing in size and poured three times. Although there are varying theories, many say that the first sake cup, or sakazuki, symbolizes the heavens, showing appreciation for our ancestors. Oh, and make sure you wait till you've got something in your cup. That was embarrassing. Alright, let's try this again. The second sakazuki symbolizes the earth and the couples vow to care for each other as long as they live. And the third represents people, and prays for the couple's fertility. The next ritual is one unique to the Hikawa Shrine and involves the offering of a comb to the Shinto gods. The bride holds the comb wrapped in cloth in front of her heart and makes a prayer. She then gives the comb to the groom, who by accepting it shows the bride and the attendees his determination and willingness to make the marriage work. Next comes the reading of the vow, reading the vow not to each other, but to the Shinto gods. The script is prepared by the shrine and read by the groom as the couple stand together. Next, we have the Tamagushi Hoten, which is a special ceremonial offering of a sprig from a flowering evergreen tree to the Shinto gods. Tamagushi, or the spirit stick, carries our thoughts and prayers through the end of the branch to the gods. <laughs> Lastly, we've got something simple and that most of you are familiar with, the exchanging of wedding bands. This ritual was not part of the original ceremony, but was added in the 1950s due to influence from Western style weddings. The ceremony ends with the Shinzoku Katame no Sakazuki, where the attendees drink sake and celebrate the two families coming together. And that concludes the Shinzenshiki.
last few years, the Shinzenshiki has regained popularity with increasing appreciation for kimonos and the was spirit among younger generations. But still, Western style weddings are much more common. To be honest, I myself never thought I'd have a Japanese wedding. And I must say, I have this channel and all of you watching to thank for this amazing experience. Your love for Japan has sparked my curiosity to get to know my roots better after having lived abroad for so long. I'm learning, seeing, and doing so much, and I truly thank you guys for that. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please let me know in the comments what part of the Japanese wedding ceremony you found most interesting, and if there are any similar rituals in your country. Lastly, a special thanks to my friend Hagi and our team at Wakon Style for their hard work, attention to detail, and for making us look good. We couldn't have done it without them. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye!